So, welcome everyone to the presentation. I'll try to tell you today some bits and pieces about uh, aircraft maintenance demand and opportunities for Lithuania. So, not sure how many of you know, so because uh, I work for a company called Kaunas Aircraft Maintenance Services, it's COMS, it's a subsidiary of Ryanair. Uh, we are operating in Lithuania for six years already, and uh, during that time, a lot of things happened. So, up to now, we are the second biggest MRO in Lithuania, and probably the most secret one. So, we'll, we'll, today we'll try to be slightly more transparent and tell you more about what we do, what we see in the industry, what's, what might happen in the next decade, and what can we do in Lithuania. Uh, so, about ourselves, I'll try to explain to you about aircraft maintenance. I'm not sure how many of you actually know uh, about aircraft maintenance. We'll see the forecast in the world, what's happening there, and again, Lithuania. Going forward to maintenance, so in the simple words to explain what is that, so we have a line maintenance, so basically everything what happens in airport during the night, ni night stay of the aircraft is called line maintenance, and uh, everything what happens there in the hangar usually called uh, heavy maintenance or base maintenance. In a more simple words, so line maintenance is troubleshooting, problem rectification, resolving AOGs, and doing everything up to a check. Uh, for heavy maintenance, that's where we have scheduled work, and we do a lot of extensive work, also planned work in a heavy, in a hangar environment. Uh, currently, Kaunas Aircraft Maintenance Services have uh, line stations in Vilnius and Kaunas airports. So in case there is any problem in Palanga, so we, we also go to Palanga airport. If there is a problem in Riga, that's where we go. If there is Tallinn as well. So Ryanair, working with Ryanair allows you to react quickly in a variety of situations. Uh, that's one of the structural checks we are com doing. So you can see the, how deep actually we are going into the aircraft sometimes if there's a problem. So the intervals that checks are usually planned. So uh, the intervals are roughly two years, every three years, six years, eight years, 11, 14, and goes up to 16 years. Uh, the interesting thing about that is that currently we, are do, we started from very small checks. So aircraft check is a planned work. It's a lot of task cards, work orders, and we need to complete all of this, what, what's given to us. Uh, we started as a company from very small one, from very small checks. For, so basically working with the new aircrafts, two-year-old, three-year-old. And now, after six years already passed, we are working with the uh, aircrafts, eight-year-old, 11-year-old, which requires much more expertise in sorting, in completing that checks. Slightly about the structure, not sure how many of you are aware about the part 145. So that's our company structure, how everything is controlled. Uh, that's accountable manager there. We have base maintenance manager, so that's the most important person there and line maintenance and workshop manager. Uh, we have HR department. Uh, also, we have very important part of us is a quality system. So also quality manager with the, his team. If you would start working with us, so we have a, this is everything what works, the people working in the, in the hangars. So that's the core of our organization, and that's the, the people who do really the, the working really hard in order to maintain Ryanair fleet aircrafts. Uh, so we have a couple of sections. 
in our company. So when person comes to us, they start if there's a new one from a finished school, let's say finished university. They start from a trainee mechanic here, then they go up the ladder to mechanic, then there is a career progression to lead mechanic. Then you need to complete a lot, a lot of modules, pass the modules, then you can apply for B1, B2 license. Then you work three years and then you became, become check supervisor. So the person who releases the aircraft uh, check. We also have a department which controls materials. So all the parts are being distributed within Ryanair network. So we also request parts which are being delivered to us from Stansted, Dublin, Prestwick, from other heavy maintenance facilities. So we also have a team to do that. We have dock controller team. We have a structures engineer. So structures engineer are the people who are working with the manufacturer. So in our case with Boeing. And in case we have any structural repair, that's the people who are reviewing the the damage, they assess the damage and they submit the, the information to manufacturer, to Boeing in this case. So we actually not only ask Boeing how we need to repair the aircraft, but we actually evaluate and we tell Boeing that this is how we want to repair it. And usually that makes uh, the, the time much more efficient. So that saves time for us, that saves time for our customer. Uh, small glimpse in uh, history. We started in 2012, 45 people, very small team, uh, completed 83 checks in total. So, but we were working with uh, quite new aircrafts. That's why the, the checks were quite fast and we could manage a lot of them. Going forward, the team increased up to 105 and also the check number is up to 166. In last year, we had a difference. So our check number went down and staff numbers went up. So what happened actually is we've received uh, much, not much older, but older aircrafts. So we started to repair 11 year checks and that takes much longer time. So we have a longer downtime. That's why we need more manpower in order to complete, the, complete it on time. Uh, we worked and work still usually, we start the season uh, in September and we work nine months intensively to meet all the heavy maintenance requirements, to complete all the checks and during the summer our staff usually is, how to say, they have a holiday uh, because they do all the annualized hours during their heavy maintenance season and aircrafts during the summer they need to fly and earn money. So. Simple as that. Uh, by the way, we work 24-7, so our team is doing a lot of job. The aircraft comes in, the hangar, so we have a work pack ready. Uh, there is a variety of zones in the aircraft. Well, variety is just six zones that needs to be covered. So we have wings, engines, holds, cabin, tail and fuselage, and avionics. So that's every single zone have one engineer and four mechanics to run the zone. And then because of the shift pattern, they usually overlap. So that's also some skills required. For example, avionics, we usually need them less compared to mechanics, but going into the future, the numbers should be increasing. The next slide is a small view how everything looks in, uh, during the small check, which takes five days.
check is completed, so the aircraft goes into the hangar. The, their inspection, the crucial part is making the inspections. In the first couple of days, check the aircraft, de-panel everything, inspect the components, repair everything, reassemble and release. Uh, with the fleet going older, we also require, were required to ha open additional capabilities. So basically we had to open composite repair workshop, we needed to open a boiler, water boiler workshop, uh, also we have oxygen workshop, currently working on opening air stairs workshops. So that's every single component according to the regulatory requirements requires separate uh, approval for repairing that specific component. And that's a lot of work involved in every single component. Um, that's a small glimpse of what we do. And let's try now to see what's going on in the market. Mm. Before this presentation, try to look at the, a lot of information from what's planned in the future. So what exactly is going on in the next 10 years? So just 10 years and ahead. We have a market value of MRO going to $114 billion, which is from current 77. That means MROs are really going up. MRO operators soon to be owned by manufacturers. So basically what's happening, it's uh, Boeing, General Electric, and every, every other manufacturer trying to look more at their Uh, products and their repairs would be covered by the manufacturer itself. Mm. The new aircrafts will have longer airframe intervals which will also have some effect on MROs that will require uh, that will make uh, longer intervals between the checks required which will also have some impact on the MROs because with additional thing so shortage in mechanics and engineers. Uh, there will be a huge increase in demand. We have a lot of pressure on payrolls. That means payrolls for everyone who is planning to go work in aviation will uh, probably you will sense that going forward. Uh, and mergers and acquisitions of independent MROs. So basically what's happening, all the bigger players like US-based AAR uh, is buying now Premier Aviation, uh, HNA Aviation from China, buying uh, SR Techniques, so they are just building muscles. Uh, aircraft deliveries. If you see, uh, 10 years from now, we have some shift in the air aircrafts that plan to be manufactured. We have uh, narrow bodies uh, going up by manufacturers. So we have Airbus 320 and Boeing 737 MAX will have a huge, uh, let's say, increase in manufacturing compared to the wide bodies. And go looking at the MRO spent, you'll see how it will be changing. For Airbuses, that's a huge increase because that's billion US dollars, and that's a, you see, can see here, for Airbus and Boeing, the MRO spent will dramatically increase during the next decade. Uh, MRO, according narrow bodies, will take uh, roughly 55% now of all the market of aircrafts, and wide bodies will be left with 38. Turboprops left with seven, only percent. And uh, if you look at the MRO spent by the region, you see that North America, Europe are going, still will they, they will be growing with the MRO spend, but the biggest spend is somewhere here in China, Asia Pacific. That's where actually the biggest MRO requirements are now in the next decade. Looking here, that's just the interesting information I could found. Uh, that's uh, low-cost carriers versus non-low 
low-cost carriers. So we know that Ryanair and Europe, we have roughly 37% by 37% flights are done by low-cost carriers. Uh, North America, 31%, which is the Southwest Airlines doing a lot of this. I don't have a crystal ball, but knowing that China will grow with the aircrafts, with the number of aircrafts, China will grow with the passenger numbers dramatically because there will be probably quadruple the, the, the average class. There will be just enormous amount of people who are willing to travel and willing to travel not far away from their, uh, let's say, home bases. So just around China region. So with the new aircraft that China is being building, there is a huge potential for low-cost carrier, some kind of low-cost carrier, to enter this market. Looking at engineers' demand in the world, we see a huge potential as well, because only in Europe we will require 180,000 of engineers to fulfill the requirement for the increase in the new aircraft deliveries. And the U.S. market had this graph presented because currently it's the demand and supply is just going leg to leg. And from 2025, you can see that the demand is just growing and supply remains the same. So that is a problem that they will face in the nearest future. Uh, also, there are a lot of skills and new te emerging technologies coming, which uh, basically is composite material repair and manufacture. So that's the stuff, that's the people that will require most because most of the new generation aircrafts, they have much more composite material. Even the, all the fuselage are made from that material. We have a increase in collection and reporting of data for advanced analytics, big data and predictive maintenance. We need will, that will create a huge, um, how to say, demand for that specialists. We also have a next generation avionics and electrical systems. So the aircrafts, the machines are producing much more information, which is needs to be adopted and reviewed and analytically assessed. Assessed opportunities for Lithuania. Knowing the facts, what was mentioned previously. That's the picture that I like. Uh, so what Lithuania can actually do with this? So what we can do is to try to get more MROs in, into Lithuania or expand the ones we already have. Try to approach OEMs, so that's manufacturers. Not necessarily they will build building uh, the aircraft here, but there might be some components or just part of their services. IT technology centers, again, there is a lot of information being created with the, with the new generation aircrafts that we need to assess. Additionally, Lithuania was always known as a good uh, with IT talents. So we have a huge pool of IT specialists and companies really could look at the establishing their business into Lithuania at the moment. Shared service centers, more and more companies do not want to keep their eggs in one basket, so they share the risks, and that is a chance for, and that's the opportunity for Lithuania. Training centers, again, Lithuania has uh, all the possibilities to establish training for pilots and training for engineers. That's already, Lithuania has a lot of uh, experience in the uh, training of pilots preparation, there is a lot of businesses already operating in Lithuania who are doing that. Steps to do that. So one of the steps already most of you hopefully did is to choose aviation field. Uh, that would allow us to increase the pool of aviation specialists, engineers, mechanics, pilots, everyone who is connected with aviation. Uh, encourage people to choose aviation. So what our company does usually, 
during the last three years. We brought roughly 5,000 kids, pupils, students to our hangars to show around what we do to, so that just, they just would see what's happening and it might be that one day they will decide to select aviation. Uh, establish part 147 organizations. That's also currently, KCU is now currently establishing this and uh, I know that there is a huge interest in that type of educational institutions. Going forward, ensure highest standard personnel skill set with aviation industry experiences uh, attracted and maintained in the regulatory authority. So in order to grow business, to, how to say, to develop, we need to regulatory to also be very professional in that matter. Uh, establish the aerospace cluster, so that's a uh, also a good thing which um, an example Shannon Airport did that. Uh, so they combined the companies who are working in aviation field, universities, companies, leasing companies, MROs uh, into one unit uh, which actually combines roughly companies employing 2,600 people. This uh, cluster creates other companies to join them because there is already a huge pool of the companies, aviation specialists, and more and more comes in. So that should be also a step forward. I mean, one thing which we need, which we need to do in order to attract uh, companies. Good teamwork and interaction between government and business in order to attract FDI. FDI is a foreign direct investment. Uh, that's everywhere. That's the same. Business and government needs, needs to cooperate at a high level in order to attract companies. Attracting companies will create jobs, will provide a lot of benefits for the country. Uh, what else could be done is a favorable fiscal environment. So in order attracting, you need to be very fiscal friendly let's call it. Again, knowing all the facts here, uh, we'll look at a company you all know, right? Ryanair. Uh, that's this year. There is 130 million passengers planned in this financial year. Looking forward, uh, in six years, Ryanair will have 200 million passengers. So there is a huge, huge, enormous growth ahead. What will happen in 2024? So apart, uh, Ryanair will be the Europe's greenest airline. It will also have um, a huge increase in aircraft fleet. So from currently 400, roughly 400 aircrafts flying, it will go to 600 aircrafts. That will require from currently nine heavy maintenance lines, it will require 21 lines. So that's again a huge potential for Europe to establish heavy maintenance bases. Uh, staff from 13,000, it will grow to 20,000. So that's again, Ryanair is not one, com one uh, city based. Yeah, it's a global, it's a multi European company. So that's a uh, possibilities for everyone to join. Engineering staff will probably double in 2024. So that's again, that just shows that selecting uh, aviation studies now is a good move to, uh, in the future. Uh, aircraft fleet, current 6.8 years old fleet will become less than five years old because the new aircrafts are coming into the fleet constantly, even, even now. So, guess what? We are hiring. And if you have any seats available, you are always welcome to join us. That's a small, small presentation I wanted to tell you today. So if you have any questions, please.
people work in camps now? In camps currently work 200, roughly 220 people. So uh, we have a plan to grow more, but again, we'll see what we can find in the market. In the market, it's very different. In how, how many Lithuanian citizens and how? how so many? let's say Lithuanian would be local. We have also on permanent contracts, we have not only Lithuanians, we have a lot of people from Ukraine, we have people from Greece, other European countries, and uh, roughly we have around 150 local and 50 and plus uh, uh, foreign people. Just a second. Yeah. Uh, it's excellent. It will, it will save fuel. It will save fuel. It will have a huge difference for us. It's always, it will, how to say, we're happy to have something different, right? Because we're operating now with the, always the same fleet. It's uh, also that is a good thing because we have the same fleet always and the, the work that we get is the same. Adding max is a completely new, new, how to say, thing for us. So I can comment only from my own work, right? So connected with heavy maintenance, line maintenance, it's not such a huge difference. It's still the same aircraft, it just can fly longer. So I'm really thrilled and happy to have more. I would be even happy to have much more different uh, aircrafts adding to the fleet. Not me personally, but Ryanair currently have heavy maintenance facilities in Prestwick. So there is five bay hangar in Scotland. Uh, there is two bay facility in Kaunas. And currently there is two bay facility in Wroclaw, Poland. At the moment there is an establishment in Spain, in Seville, another two hangars. So it's still 100% increase required during the next couple of years. From, sorry? Are you ready for phase out of 300 aircraft of um, 12 and 16 years? And not actually can't, uh, how to say, commend that because I don't know whether they will keep it or they will, how to say, give it away. But actually, the new aircrafts are always going in. So that's the plan. We will constantly be growing with the fleet number. And what they will do with the aircrafts. I don't know. I know that the oldest we have now is 14 years old, right? So previously it was an option that aircraft should not be older than eight years because after that it will just, the cost of maintenance will increase dramatically. So we, the company needs to get always new aircrafts. And uh, because there was not enough aircrafts in the industry, the fleet started getting older and we need to, we, ha we never, plan to have a check of 11 year, 14 year, and 8 year, well 8 year is fine, but not elder. And the situation is changing. Hopefully that answers your question, I don't know. What do people do in, in summer? In summer they are in Palanga, <laughs> uh, but actually, so we work on annualized hours, so during nine months they work really intensively and they complete all the work. So that means they work as we do per year, they work per nine months. So during summer they can stay, they can rest, it's up to them. If they want to work, and there is the people who are saying, I want to work. So we are distributing them across the Europe uh, to support uh, line maintenance, to support the Ryanair fleet. So. Stansted, Milan, Bergamo, Dublin, and all the other facility stations. But more people walk or rest? And more people rest. rest. Yeah. Do you have some internships for non-technician uh, future graduates, for example, for us, uh, students of uh, aviation management? 
I would like to study aviation management, <laughs> to be honest. And uh, why not? We are a young company, always open for uh, everything, actually. So what can be done? So usually people apply to us. There is a email here. So you just send your CV, state what you are interested in, and we are we consider everyone's uh, applications. So definitely we can find something. And by the way, we would require additional support. So it's up to you. Okay. I speak about production in uh, Lithuania. Mm -hmm. It's about what? I don't know. About seat covers or? Uh, it depends. Currently, we have companies which already are creating parts, bits and pieces for uh, manufacturers. So we have some CNC material, we have some fabric materials who are already doing that. So you're just combining everyone, as I said, into one cluster, which could then attract much more. I cannot tell what, what can it be, but... But now you, you have support from another companies in Lithuania? From, from, uh, from, so, from as uh, comes, we are operating in Kaunas, we buy services from other companies, yes. So, we cooperate with our neighbors, so FL, Baltic Maintenance, right, Dot LT, Ave Baltica. With. So, as I say, the more people are in aviation, the better it is for the industry. So, we are not here to make uh, obviously to make war we're here to create more people uh, how many people uh, with uh, zero experience with zero experience yes uh, you have uh, no, started uh, its first aviation company to, to them okay so in lithuania when we came we had really not a huge pool of specialists so we hired a lot of bachelors with aviation theoretical knowledge and that's how actually we've trained them they were around the europe they worked everywhere they came back here they passed the modules now those who started with us six years ago they are now our engineers so basically what happens we are always constantly training people so they finish the university they come to us we have our own own program heavy maintenance facilities in every single facility they have a trainer which creates the same program so we have it doesn't matter if you will study in Konas in Prestwick or in uh, Wroclaw it will be the same level so that's why it allows us very flexibly utilize people during summer because they are moved to another base but then for them it's the same but if you speak about uh, students or after university do you have people yes uh, how many it's 10 percent from university? Yes. <laughs> Difficult to say. So I know from one university I have roughly 15%. From another university I have 20%. So we also have people who finished only high school and came to us. And they really did a really good job in order to be now engineers. So it's a mixed mixture, you know. Even the age. We have 22 years of age. We have 60 years of age. Person. The average in our company is 29, and the company, because it's growing so rapidly fast, they have a hu really good career perspectives. Not only in us, in our company, but also worldwide. And I it's low cost, and uh, TAT it's very important, mm -hmm. important time of uh, maintenance. Yep. And now you're doing uh, very longest and uh, strong mm -hmm. maintenance. And maybe now you have uh, experience uh, which you open and uh, TAT more than that. So what happened previously, Ryanair, during their maintenance of the aircraft, they worked together with the authorities, with their maintenance repair organizations, and they evaluated the, the time frames of specific uh, jobs. And they suggested, like, if we don't find it in two years, six years, so why don't we look there after seven years? So there was a long, let's say, 
program in place like predictive maintenance so that will allow Ryanair to be efficient in that aspect as well. But um, uh, my question is another. If you start maintenance, mm -hmm. check, yep. open, and you know, for example, Karaja, mm -hmm. and uh, TT plane in 10 days, so... And it days. will take longer? Yes. Uh, okay, so that's a normal pr process, right? So sometimes you will find you have a plan to finish the aircraft in 10 days. Yes. But it, if you will find the structural damage, which will require a lot to remove a lot of things, to order a lot of parts, and additionally, even to get more people in place to do day shift, night shift in order to meet this, and after you complete the repair, which will take, let's say, five days, so it's 15 in total, and then additionally, when you finish that repair, it will require to reassemble everything. So again, plus two days. So in our case, once we find that this will be a huge work, we need to present that in a very clear pathway. So we, we will require this amount of days, but that is because first day we do this, second day this, third day this, blah, 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 and then good and to go. And you work uh, all time? 20, uh, yes, we work 24-7. So we start September 1st, as, as I said, people go to school, that's how we work. September 1st we start, two, two weeks of holidays during Christmas, New Year, so no one is working, everyone holidays, and then up to June 1st. June 1st, everyone goodbye, see you September 1st. Mm -hmm. No. So we are uh, like internal department of Ryanair. So what we do, we work only with Ryanair. And we work uh, very efficiently. So Ryanair cannot get anywhere else that type of service, what we can do for them. Everything is in our hands only for right here. But that's in some way that's good because we are secured. We know exactly what we will do next year, the next after that, up to 2024 and then we'll need to do even more. Which which is a safe working environment. Yes. Uh, we can tell that I was not involved in that decision, and yes, that happened in a previously, and we are always keen on learning good things. So I would be very happy to learn from everything, because aviation is a learning path, you know. Our engineer who is like, I don't know, 50 years of experience, he says, I'm learning every day. That's the best school. So if I would have an option to learn from other MROs, I think that's, uh, that would be a good idea. And I think that there, there, there is where to go, how to say, to get even better. The biggest maintenance now you yeah, you can go. The, the biggest uh, maintenance now you are doing 12 years, so which CQ? The big, so the oldest is 11 year check, and the biggest about the amount of work is 8 year structural check, because that requires much more tear out of the, the whole, whole aircraft. So it not, it's not necessary, you know, like the elder it gets, it's the more and more work. No, sometimes it's in the middle, all the work, and then after that it's just a couple of things. Uh, fleet. fleet, yes. It's one of the youngest in the in the region. I mean, it's less than seven years, and it's just getting younger. So in, in six, six years, it will be less than five years. So basically, all aircrafts will be just brand new. Vince, yeah.
for the technicians to get the license. What is your opinion? What is the main uh, source for the knowledge, skills, and, 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 and uh, uh, for technicians to get the license? Is it experience? Is it theoretical knowledge? Is it, is it general knowledge? Thank you. So, personal opinion, okay? It's a combination of technical and practical experience. So we have, how do you say, you cannot be a very good engineer only with theoretical knowledge. And you cannot be a very good engineer only with practical knowledge, without theoretical. So I think that's the, 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 the most important thing, how you can combine it. So, well, what does this uh, basic training states? Is it 50-50 or not in part one for seven? More or less. Yeah, so more or less the same. So by the way, who wants license, Vincent can uh, provide you courses. <laughs> That's it. Actually, I have one question. You asked, uh, you said that uh, the largest check you performed was eight year old, uh, eight year, yeah. and that you clear out on the eleven, uh, on the eleven year. So you skipped. Uh, you just um, prepared your own maintenance program, right? Mm. It's still under uh, Boeing's maintenance program, but that was Ryanair agreed with uh, Irish authority on their amendment. Uh, you speak not about base maintenance, but about flight maintenance. Hmm. You, uh, so, uh, you provide uh, the light maintenance for all the region, for Riga, for Vilnius, um, or not? No, we provide maintenance only for Vilnius and Konas. Hmm. And in case of AOG, is that when we go. So, an example, there was a case when aircraft lands in Riga and there is AOG. So we take the aircraft from Kaunas, fly there, fix the aircraft, come back, and the, the aircraft flies from Riga. Because we are just closest there. But uh, on the other hand, Ryanair is really flexible on that because they have their own smaller aircrafts in order to react quickly to AOGs. This technical. Yeah, so there is like AOG teams are in biggest hubs, which are departed immediately just in order any AOG is somewhere in the region. Uh, where is base? This? Uh, usually based in Stansted, the biggest hub, and currently, if I, the last time it was there, so in Milan, Bergamo. Uh, for example, uh, in uh, Vilna, no, line maintenance, how many people have uh, in uh, airport? Two, three, we have ten. two people, so two people working on five on, five off shifts. Mm -hmm. So um, that's. You speak about biggest airport, Barcelona, Rio. Uh, yeah, it, so the bigger hubs, I don't know. So for example, in Stansa, there is roughly 50 aircrafts. So I don't know. That's a lot of people working there. It's mm -hmm. not only engineers, it's also mechanics. In our case, it's only two operational aircrafts, which is one B1. Mostly is enough. If there's anything required, any AOG, we can supplement that from the hangar. Uh, do you have a PBH uh, with uh, another supplier? Mm, no. Okay. Logistic? Inside? Everything is controlled by ourselves. A technical school uh, parts? Uh, Ryanair has their own part 147, so we provide uh, our engineers type courses. But up until the type course, you need to have uh, all modules covered. So that's up to the person to come t through our door. We have also junior project, uh, junior engineer program. So a person comes with a license without a type. So we have specific program for them to prepare to work for us and then get the type course and work successfully. Uh, you bus Angar is separate, yes, in Kaunas? It's connected with administration and stores facility. Uh, but uh, first one and... Uh, yeah, it's two, two bay facility. So in each hangar you can put only one aircraft. Uh, how long built the 
this uh, I hung up for one place. So one hangar was built in 2010, and we started the checks in 2013, and then we started to build another one. So it takes from eight to 12 months to build that type of... Plans? To build more? Yeah. We don't know. You've seen the forecasts. Everything is growing, so... One day, maybe. Yep. Thank you very much. Thank you. Pleasure. Thank you.